Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew. We are happy that you have joined us as we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. I'm Jerry Berg. The lectors for this Mass are Jeff Burgoyne and Pam Davis. Our music will be led by Stephen Paul. Our cantor is Rick Rembelski. Serving the Mass are Ashlyn May, Emma Mosley, and Vincent and Matteo Prezao. The presider for this liturgy is Father Grayson, assisted by Deacon Tom. To minimize distractions during the Mass, we ask you silence all cell phones and personal devices. Now please stand and greet your neighbor. So we have to apologize before Mass begins. Electronics are a great thing when they all work together and are do what they're supposed to, but this morning the screen will not work, and this has been an issue from last night, so we know it's complicated. Uh, so we apologize today. Sing from your heart. And the ball goes to Rick, our candy. Easy. <laughs> shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You will speak your words in foreign lands, and all you shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Father. Very warm welcome to everyone. Here we are already in the second Sunday of Lent. Some, I think it's, uh, am I getting this right? 11, yeah, 11 days or so into Lent. Um, today will be a test to see how well you know your prayers. Um, and so, uh, brothers and sisters, we uh, are strengthened here at this altar, this table, for our Lenten pilgrimage as we head closer and closer towards Easter. So, brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, 
Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Your words, O God, are truth indeed. And all your works are ever faithful. You love justice and right. Your compassion fills all creation. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. See how the eye of God is watching, ever guarding all who wait in hope to deliver them from death and sustain them in time of pain. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we play our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, for praise is the son of the righteous. How happy the people of God, the ones who God has chosen. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that came from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but not made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, word of God. Lord Jesus Christ, glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ, from the 
shining cloud The Father's voice is heard This is my beloved Son The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light and behold Moses and Elijah appeared to them conversing with him then Peter said to Jesus in reply Lord it is good that we are here if you wish I will make three tents here one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah while he was still speaking behold a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell this vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Plastic cups were a good investment. <laughs> So it's one of the great injustices uh, in life that dad gets first dibs on the remote control. Uh, I don't know if it's like this in your home, but it was in mine growing up. Um, Sunday morning, of course, dad had the remote control and he watched his show. I don't know if some of you remember, I don't think it's playing anymore, the McLaughlin Group. I think it showed on Sunday morning, and it was horrible, <laughs> especially for a young kid, uh, not understanding, you know, whatever they're debating, politics and, and all sorts of things. Um, but they, the, the participants in the show would constantly interrupt each other. They were disrespectful. They would just speak over one another. And uh, so one morning, my sister is in the kitchen with my mom. And my mom says, where is your father? And my sister says, he's watching the interrupting show. <laughs> and so that name stuck. And we, for, from then on out, we called it the interrupting show. <clears throat> when we open scripture and we consider different, maybe titles or images for what, what God uh, is like, you know, we have God the shepherd, God the Father, um, God the Gardener, maybe some of you recall that one. Perhaps a new one that we can consider today is God the Interrupter. So in our first reading, uh, Abraham is still Abram, but Abram is there and God visits him and he says, Abram, you know, Abram, pardon the interruption, you know how you're quite comfortable here in the land of your forefathers and life is okay and rather comfortable? 
I'm going to ask you to do something special. Pick up your life, all that you've known, and journey into a land that is unfamiliar to you. And Abram, I have a lot to share with you and tell you, but you can't bear it all right now. Maybe your head would explode. But in time, you'll understand and you'll learn. But for now, you're just going to have to trust. So pardon this interruption, Abram, but uh, I'll be with you. Two weeks ago, I got a phone call, and uh, the phone call was very short. Uh, Father Grayson, how you doing? Uh, great. Uh, listen, uh, some news to share. Uh, we're going to be sending you to uh, Shrine of the Little Flower. Uh, let's see, anything else to share? I don't think so. Count on our prayers. Um, we'll be in touch. <laughs> and I didn't have time to ask the most important question, what about the terrible Ted's? Life tends to get interrupted. Uh, I've loved it here uh, in Rochester at St. Andrew. Uh, you all have been such a blessing, and I'm still processing the interruption. Um, in our gospel today, um, it's the famous scene of the transfiguration, but there was an aspect of it that I saw just for the first time in this last week, and it's, it's this. Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, and Peter is never able to control himself. He's always speaking. And he says, oh, Jesus, uh, let's uh, make three tents here, uh, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And the text says, even as he was speaking, behold, a cloud who came over and God's voice spoke. God interrupted Peter. <laughs> he said, uh, Peter, for once, just zip it. And uh, what does God the Father say? He says uh, to Peter, James, and John, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. You could say that the apostles, both before and after uh, the transfiguration, they were hearing Jesus, but they weren't listening to him. Jesus had been saying to the apostles, both before and after the transfiguration, cross and glory, that's the way it's going to be. And the apostles were saying, no, Jesus, listen, let's think about this. No cross, just glory. Uh, Jesus, no, 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 you've got the wrong idea. Uh, no cross. What do you mean, Jesus? Cross and glory. These are perhaps the two phrases or messages that I'd like to share with us today for us to take home. God the interrupter and cross and glory. You could maybe uh, consider that maybe we see these two different patterns among maybe even ourselves, among some Christians. Uh, some Christians talk only about the cross and it's kind of sad and negative. There's no perhaps light of glory that spills into their lives. Sad face. Um, and maybe there are some Christians who just want to talk about glory and, no, 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 I don't want to think or look or listen to anything having to do with the cross. But these two go together. Um, it can't be any other way. Jesus, time and again, tries to remind us of this. Cross in glory. That's how it's going to be. Have you ever uh, stopped to consider that this seems to be something written into the very nature of reality in our lives? Think of our lives as a journey, a pilgrimage, different twists and turns, interruptions. All of us want to be humble, but few of us want to experience humiliations. All of us want to be tough, and we want our kids to grow up tough. But none of us wants to get beat up. We all want to be resilient, but we don't want to experience loss or failure. We all want to think of ourselves as people who are merciful, people who show mercy. But in order to be merciful, you have to be first transgressed. Someone has to offend you. 
None of us wants that. All of us wants to be wise, but how many of us want to have to learn the lesson the hard way, which seems to be the way wisdom is gained? Um, All of us want to have faith, but none of us wants to lose control. Um, But this is how it is. Cross and glory. In order to have faith, we have to experience the loss of control. We have to learn the hard way to become wise. We have to be transgressed and offended in order to learn what it means to be merciful. We have have to lose, we have to fail in order to become resilient. We have to get beat up in order to become tough. We have to experience humiliations to become humble. It's written into the fabric of our lives. Um, Maybe we wish it could be otherwise, but it's not. And Jesus comes to us as the best of companions, and not just that, uh, but Savior, friend, on this pilgrimage of life to show us that the cross leads to glory. And God's interruptions, even though they might not be welcome, there's something to them. Um, I'm sure a a number of us have heard the phrase before, um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I'd actually like to challenge that today. Um, Is that always the case? In fact, no. Some people, as they experience failure, loss, uh, being offended in life, they become hardened, they become cruel, they become bitter. Uh, Maybe we even see some of that in ourselves. Or maybe we're there and we're going to hopefully move somewhere else. Um, What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's not always the case. It would seem to be the case that in the journey of life, uh, what matters is who you journey with. That might make all the difference. When we come into Mass, um, one of the things that we say is, okay, Jesus, Lord, here on this pilgrimage of life, it's going to be this way. It's going to be through you, with you, and in you. And Jesus, I'm going to trust that this journey that I'm on, while there might be interruptions, uh, while there might be crosses. This is a journey of glory. And for the moment, I'm going to trust that that's going to be the case. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came came down from from heaven, and by by the the Holy Spirit was was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we stand together at the foot of the cross and recall all that God has done for us, his people, let us now present our needs to him, knowing he will respond in love. For the church, that we may be transfigured more and more into the image and likeness of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, a peace founded on forgiveness, understanding, and compassion. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and candidates, that God will lead them to a deeper awareness of the new life within them and help them be renewed by their Lenten observance. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Rochester area Catholic family of parishes, that we, like Abraham, may go forth from all that is familiar to new places and relationships in which God leads us. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and dying of our parish and families, that they may find healing, courage, and strength in God's mercy during their time of need. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Father Norman Thomas, Sister Camilla Witten, and Eva Marowan, that they may live in the light of God's presence forever. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercessions placed in our prayer basket, and for the people of St. Andrews, who this, par- who this Mass is offered, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we pray this prayer for priestly vocations. Um, let's see how well you've remembered it. <laughs> Heavenly <laughs> Father, Father, Lord of the, of the harvest, call forth, forth vocations to the, the priesthood from our archdiocese and families. Jesus, Jesus, eternal eternal high priest, give us men willing to sacrifice and serve. Make Make their hearts after your own sacred heart. Holy Spirit, everlasting love between the Father and the Son, strengthen, inspire, and set men on fire with divine charity. Grant them the courage to say yes to their vocation. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Mother of Priests, Comfort and and protect protect your sons as they discern their call. With St. Joseph, may they know your love and companionship as they deepen their relationship with Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. Anne, pray for us. St. John Vianney, patron saint of priests, pray for us. Loving God, we ask that you hear and answer all of these prayers as we make them through, with, and in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Steeds and chariots of flame. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us, Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Take away the 
mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the sins of the world grant us peace body and a healing remedy amen behold the lamb of god Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Transform us as you transfigure. Stood apart on tables high. Lead us up our sacred mountains. Search us with revealing light. Lift us from as you transfigure one spoke with those holy names we surrounded by the witness of the 
Transform us as you transfigure, would not stay within our shrine, keep us from our great temptation, time and truth we quickly find, lead us down those days. my Lord, it's you I adore, nothing on earth could ever take your place, you might humbles every heart, the highest of heavens bow, nothing on earth Take your place, and now we see your sacrifice, the greatest gift, our greatest prize. It's you I adore, nothing on earth could ever take your place. Your might humbles every heart, the highest of heavens bow, nothing on earth could ever take your place. Now we see your sacrifice, the greatest gift, our greatest prize. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, 
for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to keep this up here. Thank you. Very good, brothers and sisters. Just three announcements this Sunday to share. Um, don't forget Lenten Mercy Nights are on Tuesday evenings, 6 to 7.30 p.m. at St. Irenaeus during Lent for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and um, Sacrament of Reconciliation or Confession. It's another great opportunity, avenue um, for reconciliation, confession this Lent. Tuesday nights, 6 to 7.30, St. Irenaeus Mercy Nights. Um, it, Father Brian and I had a laugh over this last uh, uh, couple of days. Um, he posted, you know, uh, uh, a, a short little uh, post on Facebook um, of Mercy Night, and encouraging people to come, and, you know, 30 likes, you know, more or less. But when he posts a picture of Fernando, he gets like 300 likes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is, I guess. But um, uh, Mercy Nights are a great little opportunity, a little blessing this season of Lent um, to make a special trip over to Irenaeus, maybe a parish that you might not often visit, um, to experience a special little Lenten moment. Saturday, March 11th, after uh, the 5 p.m. Mass, the Knights of Columbus are hosting an all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner. My microphone just cut off. An all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner, uh, the Desert Dinner, which supports seminarians um, at Sacred Heart Seminary uh, to go to their trip to the Holy Land. Uh, so to visit Mount Tabor, Mount of Transfiguration and, and all those other places. So that'll be Saturday, March 11th after the 5 p.m. Mass. And lastly, if you'd like to volunteer to take Holy Communion to the homebound, please contact David at the parish office. That might be a great little mission to take on if you have time and space in your, in your life uh, to take communion to the homebound. I believe that's it. No other announcements. Count on our prayers for you throughout uh, this Lent, and please keep us in your prayers as well. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. your living voice. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine to the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today.